I don't know how all these people come up here and say these wonderful, wonder thi wonderful things without using any notes. Um, John, you, you helped out a lot because my remarks and your remarks really overlapped quite a bit, so I really all I need to say is ditto. <laughs> um, many of you may remember when Brooke and Tony uh, came to Hawaii at a, about a decade ago. And I had them come out at that time because I wanted to, in a sense, share my Los Angeles ohana with my new Hawaii ohana. And tonight, all these years later, Hawaii is home to me. And I'm welcoming Brooke and Tony back to my home and sharing much of, his, of what has enriched my life over the last decade. Uh, for instance, a much, a much older Noah who loves Tony's scrambled eggs. Um, friends, colleagues, donors, students, to two people who've known me for decades. And it's not enough to tell them about you and what we've done together. Um, I want them to see it and touch it. I want them to feel the difference we've made. Assets has enriched my life in the most positive ways and I want them to revel in it as much as I do. What brought me to Assets 11 years ago is what still drives me today. I came here for an interview, although I don't know that it's really fair to call it an interview because the truth of the matter is, is that I came here because it was a three-day all-expenses-paid trip to Hawaii. <laughs> I had no intention of leaving the country school where I had been at that time 27 years and didn't think that they, I would be offered a position anyhow and quite honestly wasn't really all that interested. But all that changed when I walked onto the school's campus and I saw that it was filled with people just like me. And I don't mean the faculty and staff. It was the students. In every student, I saw some aspect of myself. These kids were living my life experience. They were smart, but paid attention to too many things, and not always the things that other schools wanted them to pay attention to. Their grades certainly didn't reflect their brilliance. The lucky ones had been called unique, or wired differently. The not so lucky ones sometimes were called stupid, or lazy, or sometimes even worse. They carried with them wounds everywhere, in school, with friends, in relationships, I can sure relate to that one, and with family who didn't know how to help. But here at Assets, the wounds began to heal. They fit in. The faculty got them, knew how to teach them, knew how to relate to them. Many of these students came to Assets pessimistic, fatalistic, and apathetic. And now, what I saw were kids that were thriving, enjoying school, they were optimistic, they were excited about learning. They were truly beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now, my passion has always been for progressive education. But when I flew across the ocean and found assets, I found my people, and I found where I belonged. I say it often, not because I don't have anything else to say, but because I think it's important. Assets is not just another independent school. It's a necessity. It's the single most important school in Hawaii because it's a life changer. It changes the community and it changes the trajectory of these, G I call them GQ kids, gifted but quirky, <laughs> who view the world through the most creative lenses of any learners I've ever known. Families don't choose assets over Iolani or Mid-Pacific or Punahou the way we choose to play golf or tennis or have chicken or fish. Families choose assets because their children's brilliance has gone unnoticed in more traditional school settings. Families choose assets 
because they're bright, inquisitive kids, were overlooked and discouraged in traditional school settings. Families choose assets because their beautiful child began coming home feeling discouraged, unappreciated, and frustrated. And families choose assets because their child began exhibiting feelings of low self-esteem or feelings of inferiority. And I'm talking about incredible, creative, talented, capable individuals. As parents, when it comes to our kids, we will do anything, right? Last year, I stood here at Illuminations and I said that I would jump in front of a train for my son Noah, and I would. Whether it's the celebrities like Brooke and Tony, or a single parent in Waianae working two jobs to make ends meet, when our kids struggle, when they truly struggle, it brings us to our knees. And we will do whatever it takes to help them, regardless of the cost. At Assets, I see it every day. We had our first public open houses this year, and close to 150 people showed up looking for help. I heard about one mother who started crying as she heard the faculty and staff describe our students and how we do what we do so well. She, put on, she literally put on sunglasses to hide her tears. And afterwards, she went to our soon-to-be wonderful head of school, Ryan Mesa, and said, we're in. Whatever it takes, we're in. But then, awkwardly, she said, I don't know how we're going to make it happen. You see, school challenges cross all socioeconomic lines. And that's why we're all here tonight. You're the answer to how she can make it happen. You're the reason we can take these brilliant, gifted, and dyslexic kids and change their worlds and change their futures. Together, all of us, we transform lives. We change families. We save relationships. We launch scientists and architects doctors, engineers, teachers, maybe a lobbyist from time to time, <laughs> into the world. And you do it with us because you know that our community needs them, they're our future, and with your help, that future is infinite. And unlike those other schools, Assets doesn't have the luxury of large endowments. Although, quite honestly, I think we deserve to have the largest endowment of them all combined. But instead, we manage what we have the way many of us manage our family finances, putting what we have to work, taking care of as many students as we can each year based on what we have on hand. Maybe we set a bit aside for next year, but mostly we put that money to work right away because these kids and these families can't wait. We count on you, every single individual in this room, so that that mom and that child can count on us. When I told our board last year that I'd be retiring, I did it with a wonderful sense of accomplishment for what we have done together. We acquired the right to purchase the lower school campus and we did. We dove into our first capital campaign in decades and successfully opened a beautiful, beautiful new K-4 village this year, fully funded. We acquired, thank, thank you. We acquired the serene Aleva Heights High School campus in a coordinated merger with Academy of the Pacific that honored their decades of service while also making a path for decades to come. We are financially sound at a time when other schools are faltering and we continue to grow while independent school applications are on the decline. Bottom line, 
the state of the assets union is strong. None of this, absolutely none of this would not have been possible without the amazing le leadership of two superb board chairs. Pat McFadden, at the start of my tenure with assets, and of course John Morton, who has stood by my side these last eight years, consistently guiding and advising in his quiet, effective, level-headed way. Although I must admit, sometimes when I do call you John, there's kind of a kind of a lengthy silence on the other end of the phone. <laughs> uh, but doing it side by side with John has been my greatest honor. John, thank you. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what retirement looks like, um, besides more time with Noah, which I just cherish every minute I can get. Maybe some traveling with a special friend. Um, Brooke and Tony, you guys can help. Because after all, what's acting other than kind of a permanent state of retirement with just short spurts of work from time to time? <laughs> That's what I want. What I know for sure is that Asset's future will be in strong, capable hands with the very talented Ryan Mesa at the helm. I'm retiring with pride, knowing that what we've built together will only get better and stronger and more meaningful for our families and our communities under Ryan's leadership. When Ryan takes the reins in July, He'll do it with an incredibly talented board of trustees and the continued support of donors and friends like all of you. This school's future knows no bounds. Listen to the folks at Kamehameha Schools. There's a table of them over here tonight. Where are you, Kamehameha? Make some noise for Kamehameha. We've, we've just signed, we've just signed our second partnership so that kids of Hawaiian ancestry who need an ass assets education can get one. Kamehameha, thank you. And Laura Nami, Laura Nami, you're here somewhere, aren't you? From Kamehameha, where are you, Lauren? I'm gonna embarrass her. This woman is a, a miracle worker. And I don't, I don't know if she ever sleeps, but I have found if I want to have a conversation with her, the best time to do it is about 5.30 a.m. So you're amazing. Um, I'm honored by the fact that we have other dignitaries here tonight. One in particular I want you to meet because she's a new head of school and she too is on a path for a great career moving forward. That's Leah Wu, the new head, head mistress of Hanaholi School, sitting down here at my table. And in just another moment, you're going to hear from Jackson, a senior at Assets, who has been with our school since third grade. Listen to his story. He has a lot to say. And following Jackson, there will be Liam and his parents, Ross and Mika, a family whose life has been transformed because of all of us, because of Kamehameha, because of your generosity, and the magic that happens in our assets classrooms every day. So it's my great honor, truly my great honor, to stand here tonight for the last time and say thank you for your friendship, for your generosity, and for your boundless support of this incredible school. You people change lives, and in just a few minutes, you can make that happen. Mahalo.